Hello, hello. I am streaming once again. <clears throat> Let's just set everything up. Always takes me a bit. I gotta make sure I can hear myself. Okay, cool, cool. So, I'm early today, and I'm actually going to be playing the Valentine's event early. Basically, the Valentine's Day event. Oh, no. I had to ice pumpkin spice cake, and the icing melted. Oh, no. Well, it's gonna be messy. Mm. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't expect it to be messy. Well, at least. Because it's one of those pumpkin spice. Uh, pumpkin spice, uh, like, slices that you can get for like a dollar at Walmart or something like that. They come up so rare that when I see it, I have to grab it. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to get like a wipe or something like that for my hands. Yeah, trying to eat that was a bad idea, oh well. But yeah, so this event starts in Gridania again. And holy crap, it doesn't help. There's so many people. So. No love lost. Lisette de Valention has her mitts filled this Valentine's Day. So, I'm going to play this event. And then, because I've timed it, this event's probably about like an hour long maybe a tad like a little tiny bit over an hour so I'll play for an hour the event excuse me and then afterwards I'll continue with the storyline with uh, uh, Zuna so after the Valentine day event will do come highly recommend so we're gonna be back to little alamigo looks like tis the season of ardor and affection and romance is thick upon the air i the set of house valentine entreat you dearest one to breathe deep and take love's richness its cloying rosy radiance into your bosom Alas, every rose has its thorns, and even its fairest of seasons is not without its trials. Indeed, trouble is afoot, and it threatens the heart of all in this realm. As follower, a fellow of ours, a Mughal well-versed in the myriad matters of the heart, has found himself in quite the quagmire. The sweet thing of which we speak goes by the name of Kupka Koop. And is an emissary of pen passions and all such billets deuce. Valentine's Day is a joyous occasion, but not always so for those who acquit themselves as post mubles in the realm. Kupka Koop has his poor possible delivering heartwarming mischiefs far and wide, hither and thither. Though he'll never admit it, I fear he says wit's end. <laughs> My poor roommate has heard me have to go through this whole thing like twice already uh, for today because unlike the other uh, unlike the other uh, events in the past I like I said I'm trying to do this early and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take a bite of my uh, thank you Ooh, that rubbed up against Mike. I'm so so sorry. Huh. 
but you, beloved adventurer that you are, can provide precisely what our her astute herald requires, oh so desperately. Pray, lend Kupka Koop your taunts and retrieve him from the edge whereupon his wits now teether so precariously. So I'm gonna do a working adventurer is a happy adventurer. <clears throat> Marvelous! You are a hero through and through. Koopka Koop will be so relieved. I shall fetch him at once. <clears throat> yeah, as you can tell, my voice is already like, no! Because <laughs> I've already I, I've done this twice before. Ah, oh, why well, yours is the face I, w I know well. No introduction necessary, friends. For so renowned are you that I feel as if I've known you my all my life. My post mobile compatriots speak of your during do almost nightly, Kupo. How they will bristle on the puffballs when I tell them we are acquainted. Excuse me. Also, I'm so so sorry that Oh no, it seems like I when I record or when I stream, I'm real gassy and I get either burpy or hiccupy. Does this happen to anybody else? And is there a way not to do this? I know I'm a bit breathy just because I have heart and lung slash breathing issues. So I feel like I can't get enough air when I breathe in my nose. So I breathe in my mouth. <clears throat> And that might be the cause of it. And if that's it, then I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> oh well. Now then, I hear from Astra that you would help me in my hour of need, for which I am most grateful. However, it's not the work itself that vexes me, but rather a colleague of mine, a clueless courier newly induced, inducted, not induced, oh my god, into our vocation. Every Valentine's Day, we emissaries are overtaxed, and this season has proven no exception. I'd hope to nip this issue in the bud by petitioning the deputy post mogul for a helping paw or two. He obliged, but has sent someone altogether worthless, an undisciplined tyro. <laughs> to make matters worse, the daft thing is painfully ir ignorant, not arrogant. I was going to say either arrogant or ingorant. No, it's ignorance. And the ways of the heart. You should hear the way she speaks to the clientele. One ugly gift. Love must be blind. And such nonsense. Left to her own devices, I fear she will ruin Valentine's Day. Cooper. Give the girl the axe, you cry. The impulse is very much with me, I assure you. But I can't rightly turn away the very assistance for which I begged. I would come across as the most wretched ingrate to ever have wings. And I haven't the time to train her, let alone the patience. Fret not, our harried herald. You are right to assault our help. For I have come upon the clever solution to your predicament. We shall enlist the help of the Doe Tree Adventurer and House Valentine's very own Astrid to accompany said callous courier. I love how they're like, what? You cannot be surprised at my suggestion. Tis the most natural fit. Azuna, so skilled in so many subjects. Well, teacher assistant, the delicate art of the post. Well, Astrid shall instruct the Mughal in the ways of ardor and adoration. There, a splendid plan if I do say so myself. Are you both sure you're up for the task? It isn't too great a bother. What a seasonable relief indeed, Koopa. I shall bring her to you at once, for there's not a moment to lose. Also, if you haven't noticed, I, before I started streaming, I switched out of my clown attire that I got 
from the Halloween events. So that, uh, yeah. May I introduce you to my fledgling post mobile charge, Pukti Pico, and her loyal chocobo, um, oh dear, this is rather awkward. I confess your friend's name has slipped my mind, Kupo. Salutations, one and all. As for my chocobo, his name can't have slipped your mind, because he hasn't one. I refer to him simply as my partner dear, or when I'm feeling particularly silly, bird. Many an acquaintance of mine have attempted to provide him a name or two, but none of them ever stick. Or should I say, I always forget them. In any case, you may call him whatever you like. It makes no difference, least of all to him. <laughs> he seems like a happy bird anyway. Yes, well, be that as it may, I have tasked Pukti Pico with three deliveries, all of which I would ask you to join her on. These two are to accompany me? Very well, how am I to turn away, wherever you are? Our first stop is the Carpenter's Guild. Bird and I shall await you there. Just to let you know, I if you've seen my last stream, the Wizard 101 stream, I do now have a webcam. Unfortunately, I am playing this on my PS4, and I currently don't have a camera for my PS4 yet. Plus, I don't... I don't know. I'm... I'm feeling a little self-conscious right now, so I don't think I, even if I did have a cam, I would turn it on anyways. Ooh, someone's playing a melody. That's the other thing, is once... for a bit. He's probably like, oh my god, I have an audience. second while we listen to him play and I uh, take another bite of my cake. So cool. Oh, he has another person sitting there too. <laughs> That's Bryce.
Carpenter's Guild. <laughs> that was fun. At some point when I'm streaming to have fun and not actually doing events, I want to do that. I want to do that on stream. Is uh, that's I want to compose a uh, a song. I found a way. I, I think I found a way that to do it. Um, for the PS4, if not, then uh, I'll see if I can compose uh, on the computer, off stream, compose on the computer, and then um, go on, switch, go on stream, and then play it. I think that'd be kind of fun to do. Oh, the recipient is out on an errand or some such. A pity. As for the parcel. Well, excuse me. Since no one is available to take it, I say we just leave it any old place. There are other sentiments to be getting on with, after all. Sound like an Amazon delivery person. <laughs> I'm sorry. No offense if you're a good delivery person, but oh my god, I've come across. Most of my deliveries have been good from Amazon and other places, but uh, other places it's just, I've had postmen say, oh, well, your package might, must have been stolen by someone else when they put it at the wrong address and either forgot where they put it or couldn't be bothered to go get it. Or both. Um, I lost and actually my first. Uh, if you if you're familiar with Dongle Number Two, it was my Fuyuhiku Fuyuhiku Kuzuryo cosplay that that happened to, and I had a family member's friend actually feel bad for me seen my post on uh, my private Facebook and they rebought me the the costume they're like what size are you what's your address and they rebought it for me and unfortunately I feel bad because the one that they found for me that actually arrived to me was a bit more than I initially paid for it but I was, that was so, so sweet of them, and I was so grateful. But I was like, oh my god. Uh, another time, I've had, oh, th this made me so mad. My roommate and I like to play D&D. &D. Um, an incident happened, which is on my channel, where a DM of ours passed away, unfortunately. And I've had a hard time getting back into D&D. But before, I think it was before then, um, I thought it'd be cool because I knew my roommate wanted to get into uh, DMing a, a game. So I found this DM screen and I wanted to give it to him for one of the, one of the past Christmases. And... It came in like an envelope, you know, one of those envelope type packages, all sealed. It looked fine until I got it inside and then I said, this package feels weird and very light, but I thought it's a DM screen. Of course it's going to be light, but there was like no weight to it at all. There, this, this rant is also on my channel. Uh, I think it was in one of my blogs. Come to find out. I looked at the package more and along one of the back seams there was a slit so someone had cut it open with a knife took the screen and just gave me the envelope the empty envelope but made it look like it had something in it and I thought it was kind of weird because when I initially opened the door to get the package 
the delivery driver dropped off the package and then booked it toward his vehicle. And I thought, I, th I think it was a him. They booked it toward the vehicle and I thought, oh, well, they must have a lot of deliveries. I thought nothing of it because it was Christmas. It was a holiday season. I think it was a little after Christmas. But anyways, and now I knew why. So I opened the door and of course they're gone. Now, they're not going to deliver the package like that. You know, it's not going to make it to the truck with the with it slid open like that. So me, I've come to believe that the person in the truck doing the deliveries was like, "Huh, this is a cool package. What's inside?" and took the NEM screen. Luckily, uh, I ordered it off Amazon, and Amazon was so nice. They re, uh, was it, they resent it right away, no cost to me, and the second one got to me. So it's like, yeah, I've had packages that have not gotten to the recipient at all. Nobody knows where they are. Like, most recently, sorry I'm ranting, it's just, this this reminded me, this this got me heated. And I didn't talk about this on my, my Let's Plays, but it, it got me heated when I had to do this a third time. But, most recently, one of my friends, uh, I found out that they are really into... Uh, well, I I knew that this person was really into Dragon Ball Z. What I didn't know is that she had started collecting the manga. So they posted a wish list of the mangas they wanted, and her she had starred several. You know, she had starred a couple of the ones that she really wanted, like important, most important made it easy for me to get you know get what she wanted i got the two ones the most important and the important one so one of the volumes got to them just fine but for some reason it was split into two different orders even though i was ordering from the same place on the same at the same time but I thought, fine, whatever, it's being weird. The second manga never got to her. And it stopped updating where it was. So it was just lost in this limbo. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. So I waited. She, I, I, I let them know. We waited together. And then finally I'm like, I'm going to call Amazon. So I called again, talked to a very nice person, and within days, the volume got to her. But it was like, <laughs> so this flippin' attitude of, ah, that person's not here, I'll just leave it right here. You know, it's like, ugh. <clears throat> okay, rant over, continue with the game. I say, now hold there moments. I am no post mogul, granted, but merely abandoning a package like this before a door seems a touch disrespectful, does it not? Yeah, yeah, yes. What we have here is a gift, an item crafted with love and care. It deserves to be treated as such. Who is this from exactly? A young woman, if memory serves. Daughter to the man meant to receive this. Oh yes, and there was something about her training at the Culinary's Guild, I think. My memory's hazy. We wouldn't want anyone to steal the parcel. Hmm, you make an interesting point. The man is out on an errand, yes, and since he is with the Carpenter's Guild, it stands to reason he is out collecting lumber, and from the botanist guild like as not. 
We shall start our search there, for a Valentine's Day gift must be delivered straight to into the recipient's hands. Okay. I ran over Connie. I'm sorry. Um. Oh, okay, I thought they were naked at first. I was like, what? What's going on? Skilled. At first, I was against this, uh, the way they reworked the teleportation, and now I kind of like it because it's easier to show, hey, you have quests in this area. Alright. Go this way. <clears throat> A delivery for you, sir. You weren't at the guild when we came calling, so we took the liberty of tracking you down. Alright, get over here then. Oh, what's all this? Valentine's Day chocolate. Now this is a surprise. My daughter's an apprentice in the Culinary's Guild, you see. I had heard she'd been selected to make the chocolates for the festivities this year, but I certainly didn't expect to receive any myself. And how wonderful that you did! It's not every day one's daughter is accorded the honor of crafting such a beloved confectionery. She must be quite the culinarian. That she is! My pride and joy, that girl! What a pleasant surprise this package was! Certainly made my day! I can't thank you enough for bringing it all the way out to me like you have. I'll never forget this kindness. <clears throat> Goodness! Seems like a bit of an overreaction to be, be handed some food, doesn't it? No. He appreciated that we delivered it with care. There's Ashley. Agreed. There is a lesson to be learned here at Pukti. Joy is not meant to be kept to oneself. It is a feeling that yearns to be shared. And we played a part in him. We played a part in bringing him happiness. So it is no wonder that he sh wished to share his felicity with us. So joy is meant to be shared? Hmm. Well, when you put it that way, I suppose it's not so foreign a concept. When something makes me smile or laugh, I do tend to talk my... <clears throat> Companions ear off about it. I'm often made the happier for it. The bird's happy too. But enough about that. Time is wasting. Best be off to our next delivery. The recipient awaits at the Whistling Miller by the looks of it. Okay. I almost said a drink of water. This is coffee. <clears throat> okay. So now we go this way. Got it, buddy? 
Sorry, I was watching the dude with the box. Pardon me, but I have a delivery for you, ma'am. For me? Oh, it's from one of my dearest companions. And look what they sent. Pink seashells. Are they not extraordinary? Look at their vibrancy. Ah, and a card. Happy Valentine. Valentine's Day. How delightful. Shells. Empty ones. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can't even eat those. At least the other fellow received chocolate. Put tea. That's abominably rude. You must forgive our friend here. She is not accustomed to the lovers such as these. There we can see the lady. There's nothing to forgive, I assure you. I can hardly be upset after receiving a gift like this. And from a loved one I've not seen in quite some time. My friend, you see, is an adventurer in their own right. They enjoy being cryptic, though. And never outright tell me where they've been. Rather, they make me guess by dropping hints in the form of curiosities such as these. What a blessing this parcel is. I was only just wondering how they were faring and where their journey has brought them. Thank you, Miss Postmobile. You have brightened my day. Love is a mystery indeed, and a funny one at that. It is my pleasure to tell you, Pukti, that love is a many splendored thing, and we each have our own unique way of expressing it. The friendship between that girl and her adventurer companion is a perfect example. That gift, which appeared mere fripper. Pri to you was a treasure in her eyes. It's important for adventurers to check in with their loved ones. It's oft said that no news is good news, but I very much doubt that to be the case for those in your line of work. So you mean to say is that so you mean to say this was her friend's way of telling that young woman that all is well? Their way of sogging any worries that she may be harboring about their safety? Hmm, how fascinating. <laughs> to be sure, were I to be separated from my bird here by expansive seas or vast mountain ranges, I'd like to hear from him from time to time. Perhaps not every day. That'd be irksome. But... To know that he is in good health would be not altogether disagreeable, I suppose. Oh, the bird. Anywho, no sense in losing ourselves in thought. Not when a parcel sits burning a hole in my satchel, Koopa. Our next delivery takes us to Akalpu... Ak... Ap... Call you Falls. Let's away. Sorry, I'm standing to play this, and I almost got tangled up in my uh, cord that I have for my uh, headphones. Greetings, sir. I have for you here a parcel from one of Olda's preeminent art dealers, Koopa. At last, your earrings, they've arrived. Goodness gracious. How stunning they are. The craftsmanship, this meticulous attention to detail. I couldn't have hoped for a better present for my wife. She'll be over the moon to receive them. Her birthday is coming up, you see. I have wanted to ensure her special day is just that. I even given Kupka Krupp's palm a vigorous pat. I hear tell that one's touch, one touch is enough to bring a couple happiness for all their years to come. Let us hope so. You did well to bring these all the way out here with that scratch on them, you know. I'd begun to worry that by the time I received them, the poor things would be nothing more than scuffed, dented rocks. You got a bright future ahead of you and the Postal Service friend. Thank you. Now that is odd. Now this is odd. There's a flutter in my chest. A tickle on my stomach. Koopa. 
Are by taking ill? Or do compliments and words of gratitude always elicit this sort of response? Trust me when I say you are not ill, Pukti. That flutter you feel, those ticklish sensations you described, that is fondness, a form of love indeed, and it was made manifest by that man's appreciation for what you provided. <laughs> oh, so this love nonsense. Why, it isn't nonsense at all, is it? It's quite wonderful, actually. I liken it to that feeling when my bird and I settle down for an afternoon nap in the Twelveswood, when I tuck myself under his wing, and we're warned by the sunlight breaking through the trees. Perhaps you haven't mastered the concept entirely, but I do believe we are making strides in the right direction. You certainly seem more attuned to the ways of the heart than when we first made your acquaintance at any rate. Now that all three parcels have reached the right hands, let's return to Mia Keto's amphitheater. No doubt Kupka Cup is anxious to learn to know how Pukti veered. Here they are, our agents of affection, our heralds of the heart. Returned at last, and not before time, Kubo. Tell me, how went your deliveries? Splendid, each and every one. The recipients were all thrilled to receive their parcels, and I'm pleased to say that Putti Pico learned something along the way. Yes, I do believe I did. Love is, well, it's quite a bit more complicated than I first imagined it to be. There are hidden depths to it. Once I didn't see before. I may not be an expert on the subject yet, but I'd like to think... So I'm making sure my mic was in the right direction. But I'd like to think my ignorance is not quite as dire as it once was. We are making progress, certainly. I am glad of it. Let me... See, now I'm worried. I always get this way, so hold on. Let me just get a uh, earpiece so I can... All right, yeah. I'm good. Sorry, my brain went, yeah, you muted yourself. But did you unmute yourself? You're making progress, certainly. I am glad of it. And just so long as you did not offend anyone, I could not ask for more. Anywho, I am indebted to you, Astrid Azuna. You have spared at least three citizens of the realm from potential cruelty, however unintended it may have been. No, I'm being too harsh. Pukni, you have shown a true concerted effort to understand the labyrinthian complexities of the heart and as a reward i am inclined to set you to set to you another task for in truth your work is not yet finished much more is there to be done this valentine's day kupo when you have the time speak to me again and i shall tell you all about it love's labors Kupka Koop has a matter of the heart on his mind. There you are, and not a moment too soon. Your unwavering devotion to the ways of ardor and affection, love and romance, courtship and intimacy is both commendable and deeply appreciated. So to the task of which I spoke, it involves a woman by the name of 
Alois, I, sorry if I'm butchering this name, I just, I've never seen a name spelled like that before or heard it. Who only just posted a parcel with no small amount of urgency. However, she then returned begging us to call off its delivery. A highly unusual request, and her eyes, twin pools of sorrow. Poopo. She fled straight away ere I could even get my bearings. Let alone ask what troubles her so. Will you help me seek her out? I'm probably like patting my chest going, you can count on me. You are too kind. Now as for this young woman, she is an Elysian of great beauty and thus should not be an easy one to overlook. Last I saw of her, she had just made a sharp left at the fork in the road, unless my eyes deceive me. To the left, you say? That way lies the great... That way lies the great long growery, if I'm not mistaken. I will accompany you there, Koopa Koop. Koop. Ka Koop. Izuna, Puktipio. You two will look near Nofika's altar. Should you come upon her before we do, come find us at the growery. Who, me? Yes, I am Alois. Why do you ask? Koopka Koop wants to see me, you say? But whatever for? He was beside himself with worry, Koopo. He told us you turned tail and darted off, looking dreadfully stricken, downright morose. You can understand his concern, surely. I see. I owe him an apology for worrying him as I have. And an explanation for my frantic flight as well. Koopka's still at Meh or Mia Keto's amphitheater, correct? I'll go to him at once. Actually, he... Never mind, she's already gone. I suppose I should go and fetch him then, shall I? Meet us at the amphitheater, Zuna, and do hurry. We wouldn't want her dashing off again. What is it? My cat alerted on something and now she's like just sitting by the door. What do you see? First, let me start by saying how grateful I am that you would think to come and check on me. The truth of the matter is, I received an offer of marriage. I meant to accept, which is why I came to you initially, Kupka, to see that my reply would be delivered safely. However, as I was writing to tell him yes, I found myself hesitating more than I ought to have been. I began to wonder if I was making a terrible decision, not only for me, but for him as well. The man who seeks my hand is of Ishgardian nobility and goes by the name Izil Miel. At the moment he is, well, he is quite ill and is seeking treatment here in Gridania. Do not misunderstand me. I was overjoyed to hear of his devotion. A life spent with him would be a wonderful thing, 
but I'm no noble. I am of the most common stock, no more special than a weed underfoot. I wasn't raised with the aristocratic manners a future wife of his requires. Who am I to marry into nobility? I must destroy my previous missive and pen a new letter, one telling him I can't go through with it, but that one I'll hand deliver. I won't have an emissary of love delivering such ill tidings. Everybody's like, hmm. <laughs> now, I won't pretend to be an expert in the ways of the heart. But isn't love the desire to be with someone forever and on? The desire for a trusted partner in the world? Someone with whom you can share your joys and your woes? If you care for him, be with him. Wouldn't it upset you to do anything but? It certainly seems to have. I may not have much experience with this, but I know that were I and my chocobo to be separated, I wouldn't like it. Not one bit. I don't believe giving up is a solution, Cooper. Verily, I myself am of Ishgardian nobility, and can thus speak from a place of authority. Each of our houses has its own traditions. It is our titles that connect us, not our principles. Before making your decision, seek the counsel of your beloved, and learn what his family values. I cannot agree more. After all, it is doubt you harbor, not a lack of affection. If you believe his heart to be yours entire, then trust that he will listen to your troubles, that you and he can solve them together. Why not send one more letter? Explain what it is that vexes you. Yes, I see your point. It's unfair for me to hide my feelings like this. He's owed my honesty, but how does one even write such a letter? I wouldn't know where to begin. Perhaps you should explain your apprehension about fulfilling your duties as wife to a man of a great house. Make it clear that, should you decide to join his social milieu, you will require time to study, learn, and train before you are comfortable. A word of warning, though. To compromise the very woman you are in order to bend to the rigors of nobility may leave you jaded, haggard, and altogether infuriated. Thus, I suggest you first inquire as to whether his family is capable of accepting you as you are. <laughs> Why not simply write down all your worries? I don't fancy myself a poet of passions or what have you, but there is something to be said for getting everything out in the open. <laughs> all these ideas have a great deal of merit and each should be given due consideration. Azuna, what say you? Which of these notions has struck a chord with you? All right, I finally get to do the third one. Tell him exactly what concerns you. Oh my god, Astrid is so small just down there. <laughs> my roommate just stepped into the room and my cat is just mewing for his affection as she always does. Every single time he just steps in the room or he makes like he's got to walk down the hallway, she immediately leaps up from what she's doing and just sits on the couch and just waits for like pets and affection. It's so funny. Thank you for your insight, everyone. I believe I know what I must do now. Then let us fetch you parchment, quill, and ink. Fortunate that you have us, you know. For we emissaries are never far from instruments of the post. Why, I shall even provide you the Valentine's Day theme stationery. I love the detail that you can see in Azuna's uh, outfit. There, it's done. Now all that's left is for him to read it. My darling is likely in the gentry's ward. I know he enjoys sitting in solitude on a bench not far from the gates. He'll be there like as not. <laughs> and that's where we shall try first. We'll be back with his response as soon as we are able. <laughs> Tell me hello, bird. Love's work awaits. Oh, 
Oh dear, I'm so fidgety. I just can't sit still for nerves. No, I can't take this any longer. I refuse to stand idly by while my future is decided without me. That does it. I'm going to the gentry's ward this instant. Alois, you can't. And she's gone. They don't really try to stop her that well, do they? Our duty as emissaries of love and affection demand we see that lovelorn lasts through this trying time. I shall meet you at the gates of the gentry's ward. Alright, so off we go. This way. Ah, he has a little cloud. Lord Reaper. Okay. What does this Lord Reaper look like? Oh, it's a cat person. I'm sorry to have run off like that again, but I just couldn't wait around twiddling my thumbs another moment more. If he's really, really sick, where is he staying? Because this seems like in the middle of nowhere. You would think he'd be staying in like one of the inn rooms or, you know, something like that. But no, he's just here, which is pretty far from the inn. We have for you a letter from one Miss Alios herself, Koopa. A missive for my love. Thank you kindly, Postmobiles. Perhaps it's not my place, but if I may. Alois thinks a great deal of you. We watched her as she wrote that letter you now hold, and we can see plain as day how much she cares about you. If there's love to be found in this world, it's there in every word she has put to the page. So even the bird agrees. The bird's like, yeah. The heart and its intricacies aren't my forte, I admit. But if you even as have, if you even half as much affection for her as she has for you, then what you two share is something wondrous. I only hope you can both weather whatever troubles come your way. The heart isn't my forte indeed. For one who claims such a thing, you show remarkable pers perspacity in the matter. You are quite changed from the move I once knew. Call me impressed, Koopa. Oh, here's my boy cat. He's got to peek outside the window at the neighbors. That seems to be his thing lately. At least that's better than my girl cat who like at night she'll peek out the front window and uh, a lot of times something will come up and startle her so she will scream as loud as she can which gives everybody many heart attacks as a result. What? Is it? Oh no! Does it taste gross? Have you tried it? 
It don't taste good? Toss it then. Oh my god. So, of course, I've said before, my, my roommate and I go to the food bank every so often. And we went last, was it yesterday? I, oh my god, I didn't even say when I was recording this. So, I'm recording this on... Well, it was February 11th. It's now February 12th. But we went to the food bank and we got these packs of shredded cheese. Shredded Monterey Jack cheese. And we thought, oh, cool. You know, because, I mean, that's kind of a treat. My roommate just came over with a very meh look on his face. Shredded cheese we got is plant-based. And... Yeah. Yeah. Did you even try it, though? What are you making? It's a stream. I don't care if you talk. No, plant, plant. <laughs> yeah, from what I've heard, um, vegan and vegetarian type cheese doesn't melt. Oh, well. I mean, it's. It's a gamble when you go to the food bank. I mean, we're grateful that we have a food bank. And that, I mean, they, they've given us some pretty good stuff. Like, we've got eggs, cakes, gotten meat. Good stuff, but sometimes it, it's a swing and a miss. <laughs> like with this. It's okay, though. I can get us some more actual cheese. Uh, oh, we still got regular cheese. That's fine. It's just we really thought we'd be getting some shred, pre-shredded Monterey Jack cheese. And, nah. Oh well. You are good to concern yourself over my and Alois affairs. Your kindness does you a great deal of credit. See, we can't even hide. When I had Tiny Bishi, he was like almost hidden by her dress. He's so small, it's funny. I shall pen my response this instant. Can I trust you will deliver it straight to her once I've finished? We serve at your pleasure. Your trust is not misplaced in us, good sir. Did you hear that? He's going to reply. We should return to Mia Keto's amphitheater at once. I don't want to be here when he's sent our post mogul friends all the way back there. Yes, it would be rather awkward were his letter to have no recipient. Let us explain the situation to Lisette and wait for Pukti and Kupka's, or Kupka's return, delivery. Return delivery close enough. All right. So go back. Oh, hello. You just like poof. Okay. 
Our eminent emissary of adoration and affection is with us once more. And now that we are assembled, we only, we've only to wait for the custodians of Isolmiel's reply. I feel sick to my stomach. What if I've angered him? What if he calls off the whole engagement? You have returned, and with your beloved's painstakingly penned post and paw. Okay, no, I have to go see this. No, I'm starting the second one. Oh, you're starting the second one? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey. My boy cat is very interested in my headphone cord. Okay. Poutine Pico, I was drawn to your advice in particular. Okay, so if you pick the first uh um uh, what are they called so if you pick the first bit of advice she'll go with astrid if you pick the second bit of advice she'll go with lisette and if you pick the third advice she'll go with the moogle i wrote down all my worries concerning the questions in clear and concise fashion and he responded with well, some confusion, it seems. Although now at least he's aware of what troubles me, and for that he says he's grateful. He's very sweet here, you see. He tells me that together we will go down this list of mine and solve one problem at a time, where we will live and how will be up to us to decide, not his family. I have come to ensure my letter has reached you and see if you have yet read it. After all, you did the same for me. It would be unkind to not return the favor now. He's ill. But he walked all the way from where he was to here. What is your illness? <laughs> I don't know, oh my god. Oh god, it's embarrassing. You caught me spying on you, didn't you? Oh my god. I have done this too many times. My eyes are going cross. And my brain got jumbled. And I almost said, you caught me simping on you, didn't you? No. I mean, yeah, but <laughs> they don't say that word in, except for Simpkin, which is the bard person. They don't have that word in this game. Oh my god. I'm tired. Leave me alone. Okay, uh, he's gonna show me the, the cheese after it. Oh my god, it does look like oatmeal. It looks like melted oatmeal. Panzer wants a sniff. Panzer, you won't want it. He licked his lips. Panzer, you have no idea, dude. You're embarrassed for what, pray? I found it endearing, my darling. Uh, these companions of yours, do they assist you in your writing to me? Then we are in your debt. She just went zoom. <laughs> Aloy 
Grace, my love, what say you to tea at the Carline Canopy? Where I'll do more walking even though I'm ill. There we can discuss our future. A conversation was as long overdue, I should think. Thank you, my friends. Where would I be without your help? I promise yours will be the first invitations we post once we've settled on a day. Goodness gracious me, do my eyes deceive me? Puki Pico, your palm. Got a little heart. Why, it's adopted the very shape of the season, and it's lovely beyond compare, Kupo. And tis much of a muchness with mine, or so I flatter myself to think. I can't rightly explain it, but seeing those two together brought a flutter to my chest, a spring to my wings, and the next thing I knew, my palm began to tingle in the moment in the most peculiar of ways. It is just a marvelous thing to know that we had a hand in ushering Isolmio and Alois' story into its next chapter, and to think it was all performed strictly through the art of the post. Affectionate mistives are more than just silly folder roll. I assumed them to, the silly folder roll I assumed them to be. I see now that they show what's in one's hearts like nothing else can, and we emissaries are their trusted custodians. Hi. Where are you going, Panzer? That we are, Pukti. Only do remember that letters require more than just love. They're also in need of names and addresses. And speaking of names, perhaps you might bestow one upon a certain chocobo. Think of it as a show of not only kindness, but of love too. I shall have love, you say. I suppose you're right. I was never able to recall the names given by my Mughal acquaintances, but I bet I could arrive at something that actually sticks. I will give it some thought. Make sure I've done this bird justice. Yeah! Give the bird a name. My once foolish bludgeoning has wings of her own at last. How proud I am to see you soar. You are a credit to the emissaries of Ardor and affection with your heart-shaped palm. It is my most sincere honor to have you among our ranks, and I pray that you will continue this most revered work. I would love nothing more, Kupo. What joy to be blessed with so many careers, and in this season of sublimity, no less. Tis heartening indeed to watch our numbers grow and grow, for with so many, we can ensure that ardor and affection accompany all the fair creatures of this realm where their journeys take them. Panzer? Why don't you just eat off the ground, my dude? Doesn't matter anymore, it's gone. Knowing Panzer is fur. Good job, my dude. Okay, so. <clears throat> Let's go into the inventory. Alright, now, I'll see something. The bird still doesn't have a name. Better letters. Kind of upset about that. Give the bird a name! Oh my god, that little dust bunny.
cute. Book T Pico Pico appears to be beset with troubles. Mizuna, I knew you would come. You're a marvelously convenient talent for appearing when we're in need, don't you? Anywho, troubles afoot. Word has spread of our previous endeavors, which under normal circumstances would be cause for celebration, but not so today. We've been inundated with letters from across the realm entreating our aid with all manner of vexations. Our fellows have left me here alone to feel these pleas, but I can't see to all these by myself. Please, won't you assist me in bringing succor to the hearts of the weary? I made a tidy little list of those who have written to us. No need to see their troubles in any particular order. Mind you, just try not to let a request slip through the cracks, yes? The Emissary of Pen Passions. You would see to what plagues my heart? You are far too godly, Azuna. I confess that Eloise's joyful union touched me in ways most unexpected. Excuse me. It sparked within me jealousy of all things, for in her happiness I saw reflected my own desires. Yes, tis true. I speak, I here to speak of my own beloved, the man with whom I wish to spend all my days and nights, the very gentleman to whom I am betrothed, one Sir Hortfence. The festivities have run us both off our feet, leaving us now a spare moment to while away together as we once did. It vexes me terribly, yet I cannot speak of it to him. I would flush like a schoolgirl and tie my tongue into knots. Instead, I mean to pour my woes onto parchment. Oh, this explains a great deal. At first I couldn't understand what was upsetting you so, but now it's also clear as crystal to me. Right then, on to this letter. First, what style should she write in? Keep it simple and straightforward. And how should she word her vexations? Forthrightly. There, tis done. For better or worse, the missive is penned. So, from what I gathered, if the Moogle spins around all happily like that, and the person I'm talking to smiles and nods, then that's the one I need to go with. If the Moogle does anything else, and if the person kind of like tilts their head to the side and like does the thinking, that means I did the wrong choice. And all that remains is its delivery, which I will attend to right away. Goodness me, no sooner had Sir How do you say that name? I want to say Sir Hortfence. 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 <sighs> Read your letter that he made a beeline for the nearest door to race your side, let's say. It was all I could do to keep him from stampeding through the streets. A small miracle he had the presence of mind to even hold a pen. It says he has been fretting over the same things as I have. In which case, why not come to me sooner? Honestly, he also writes that we should sit down for a proper meal once Valentine's day has come and gone. So I suppose there's no sense in holding it over his head, though I ought to. And well, that settles my affairs, I should say. My deepest, most sincere gratitude for your help, Azuna. You've conducted yourself with the diligence and... Sa sagacity 
All these words I've never seen before. Befitting an emissary of affection. Now go forth and bestow your romantic wisdom upon those in need. So see, I got the good response from her. Your assistance has been positively indispens indispensable, Azuna. If you have the time and inclination, do come by again. There's always more to be done after all. Back again, I see. The heavy heart of the realm will rest easy knowing that you're on the case. Now then, which of these distraught Eorzeans will you assist this time? So this time, I'm going to pick the Nameless Adventurer. We of the Adventurer's Guild seek to post a letter to our Guildmaster, Mother Mjorn. Though we've yet an, though we're yet an untrained and unblooded parcel of adventurers, it still grieves us tremendously to admit that we sought her aid in a task we bungled not several nights gone. We fear this blunder of ours will lower her lower us in her estimation so abominably that we may never work again. We are determined to set all to rights. But the question is how? What words will move Mother Mjorn so that she will not see us as the lumbering dolts who stepped in it? Oh, that is a pickle. Count yourself lucky, though, for you're in the presence of a renowned adventurer, one who most assuredly understands well the problem you face. So, Azuna, what advice can you impart on our flustered friends? Show contri contrition and gratitude in equal measure. See? They're like, yeah, okay. And what would convince this Mother Mjorn to provide them with more work? That failure is a novice's best learning tool. Alright, cool, cool. Here it is writ at last. Then I shall see to its safe and expedient delivery. Let down Mother Mayon. I know. Pardon my tardiness. It's Mion or Mion? Ah. Was kind enough to set out tea for me, and I could hardly refuse such an offer. It warmed my heart to see such. Mooney Fiance. And now that I reflect on it, such hospi hospitality, too, is one form of love, isn't it? But I digress. What does Mjorn write? What a relief it is to read this. She has seen how steadfast our convictions to the guild are. By hook or by crook, we shall not disappoint her. I, for one, am a fire with determination. Yeah, I did it right. Your advice has rung true indeed. Thank you for your wisdom. We shan't forget it. <laughs> hey! <laughs> okay. Two more. Are you sure? Have you listened to any of my streams? There are the VODs. The Winsome Pajal. Okay. Fancy seeing you here, and fancier still that you are the one to assist me. 
My conundrum is that, as ever my brother and I are concerned with Con E's well-being, we thought to write her, but I know not what to say, and our run has lifted not a digit to help. I would ask her to be mindful of her health, but that does not sound rather fussy. Even more so when couched in dearest sister and formal pro prose. Though I suppose Con E is both formal and fussy herself. What's more, I haven't much practice in the ways of penny proper word missives. My sister is, as I mentioned, a touch on the fussy side and holds manner. <coughs> wow, my voice always went. <coughs> and holds manners and decorum in the highest regard. Little doubt that she will read my words with a rather critical eye. You speak of Connie Senna, the elder scene seer? She is revered among our kind. To think I would soon be delivering a letter to her. What an honor. But enough about me. We're here about Rhea Osenna. Izuna, what do you think she should go about? How do you think she should go about this? Show that you are serious by observing proper letter writing etiquette. Very well, but who should she say this letter is from? Rhea Osenna may be the one composing it, but it was both her and her brother who meant to ask after her well-being. Hmm, what are your thoughts? It should be from both her and her brother. So if the Mughal spins, I did it right. And if the girl nods, I did it right. There, I have finished. Might I entrust its delivery to you? Why, of course, and away I go, Koopa. Okay. That's good to know, at least. What does it taste like? Or is it hard to explain? Yeah. <laughs> so what you did you just like sprinkle it on something? Oh, you made a salad. Uh, the elder seed seer is a wonderful woman, as many have said. She saw how nervous I was and put me at my ease immediately. Your sister is lovely indeed. <clears throat> I am glad to hear it. Let us see how she replies. Hmm. She applauds me for the maturity I show in writing her and says that as an older sister, she could not be more proud. What a curious response. I ask her to watch her health and she commends me on my maturity. Strange as this answer is, it seems our words of worry have gotten through to her, thankfully. Though I was initially reluctant, I'm glad we wrote her. My heart is lighter knowing that she is well. Your assistance in these family matters is much appreciated. Alright. And... Last one. Got it. <laughs> and see, that's why I couldn't get into the Beyond Burger. Yeah, you and your fear of condiments. No, it's not just that. It's like, if it's going to be good, let it be good on its own. Not, you know, covered up in other stuff. That true. And Ranch, the one who dreams of the wider world. Greetings, sir. My name is Eileen. It is an honor to meet one such as yourself. For you see, I have dreams of becoming an adventurer too. Oh, to think of all that you have seen, all the land you have walked, how incredible. 
But as for today, as for why I'm here today, why I want to write a letter to Cook, uh, Cook to thank him for his support. Whenever I feel low, like I want to give up on my dream of seeing the world, Kupka is there for me to lift my spirits. A message for Kupka Koop, hmm? So, Azuna, how do you think she should start it? Thank him for all his encouragement. And how should she finish the letter? Support him in his endeavors as he supports you and yours. I've taken your words to heart. I only hope this letter is enough to show Kupka how much he means to me. I'll make sure it reaches the right hands, or paws rather. Only you could have seen the look on Kupka's face when I told him who had written him. He couldn't stop twirling through the air. It was adorable. But don't tell him I said that. He was so touched, he managed to find time between his many deliveries to craft a reply, which I have here. He was really happy to receive my letter, wasn't he? He tells me he can feel my gratitude and love for him in every word I wrote. As wonderful as it is to talk with him in person, correspondence like this can be rather fun too. I'm more motivated than ever to continue my training now. Thank you so much for the advice on my letter, Zuna. And thank you, Pukti Pico, for delivering to Kupka. And the event is done. That's a very fun little event. And let me show you the... Oh god, can I... That's one side of the heart. And then... That's the other side. And then I got the... So this is the Starlight Mobile is the one that I was trying to get for. Um, Silent Ghost, which I wasn't able to. And I'm also trying to currently get this one for her. Let me show you real quick. Alright. So now that that's done... Let's... Oh, excuse me. Journal. I'm highly recommended. Not. Oops. I messed up. There we go. Oops. Why do I keep clicking on that? One more time. Little Alamigo. Okay, that's where I need to go. I gotten a bit behind with those uh, quests.
So I've been streaming for about an hour and a half. That's that's kind of why I figured. All right. Why have you returned? You're not welcome here. I thought I made that clear. You you spoke with Mifrid? It's been so long since I last heard from him. I had feared him dead. Twelve be praised. Whoever you are, Mifrid sees you as a friend. And any friend of Mifrid is a friend of mine. I know of this masked stranger you seek, and will tell you what I can. That speed of the South Shroud has increased. The bear and the youngins cares. Gundabald is willing to share with you what he knows of the mass stranger. An outsider resembling your mass stranger has reportedly been appearing near little Alamigo of late. What's more, it seems that some of our young bloods are meeting him in secret. No doubt you'll want to question them in their trysts but they are not likely to yield the information readily to an outsider. If you tell them I sent you though, they may well feel obligated to talk. Okay. Now I have to find the kids. Oh, there's one up here. Gundobald sent you. I, uh, listen, I told them it was a bad idea. All that tripe about believing the masked man and... Uh oh, you. You don't know anything about this? Why didn't you say so to start with? You can't throw the old bear's name about like that and expect me not to think I'm in for it. Hmm. A masked man? No idea what you're talking about. I ain't done nothing wrong, so leave me be. Mm-hmm. Let's go down. Ah, there we go. I'm supposed to go up later. What? Have I been mean a masked man lately? Hmm, let's see. Nope, can't say I have. But I'll be sure to tell all my friends you're looking for him. Uh-huh. Yeah, warn them all. There's a bunch been sulking about right suspicious, like, but I've got nothing to do with them. I know trouble when I see it, and that there's trouble. Mark me words. Okay. So I got the back. Here comes the yawning. Sorry.
So you have indeed confirmed my suspicions about mask men. That is most troubling. Whatever the young ones are scheming, it can lead to no good end. There is an anger inside them. I can see it in their eyes. I ought to know, for it once burned within me as well. Two decades ago, that same anger drove me and my brothers to rise against the des despot who ruled Alamigo. Not what I do, but to dispo dispose him and usher in a revelation. revolution. Well, we got our revolution all right, but it cost us our freedom. Blinded by our hate, we didn't realize that we had been dancing to the Empire's tune. By the time we did, it was too late. Alamigo had fallen. There are times when a man must be patient. Now is such a time. Though the young ones learn this, know this not. Unless we intervene, they are like to commit great folly. If you learn all of their plans, I would thank you to bring word to me. Okay. Um, let's do high potion. Wilfred wants you, or Will Red wants you. Rempring has a secret message for you. Hey, adventure, you're done talking with the old bear? I got a message for you from Will Red. Lad's something of a leader among the young ones here. He's impressed that you won over Gundabald and wants a word with you. Says he'll be weighing over by the craggy area north of here. Uh-huh. The trappy McTrap Trap area? Again. Nope. I always get lost. I should just go out the door, I usually go out and then like figure it out that way. Can I just try this one? Oh, no. Okay. Alright, um... Map. Okay, it's over here. And, um... So I gotta go to Companion, I gotta go to Appearance, and watch this. So I got the Black Mage, Barding, and I got the post -Mobile. So because we just did the event, we're gonna do post Mughal, post -Mughal, post -Mughal. And then Mount. post mobile stuff going on. Thanks for coming, friend. Tis no ordinary outsider who can gain the trust of the old bear. That's why I want to meet you, to discuss something in private. Tell me, why are you snooping about? Did the Empire sent you, or someone else? 
Corio got your tongue? Hmm, no matter. Whoever it is you work for, your meddling ends here. Get him. Uh-huh. You're stronger than you look. This changes nothing. Threaten us, beat us bloody all you like. But nothing short of death can make us give up our fight. We're going to obtain the power to bring down the Empire. And with it, we'll reclaim our homeland. Mm-hmm. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, here we go. Attacked by Will Red and his cronies? That they would go to such lengths for the sake of this plan of theirs. Left to their own devices, the young fools are like to harm others, if not themselves. We must uncover their agenda and put an end to this madness. Okay, let's see. Um. Big trouble in little Alamigo. Gundabal needs your help to rein in the young ones of Little Alamigo. Wilred mentioned obtaining the power to bring down the Empire. Of what power could he be speaking? Gun Gundabal, I. Bert. Bertliana. God's preserved, what happened? I was out forging when the corpse brigade came. They took me to their hideout and they, they, a whole while they laughed at me. They said that I suffer because I cling on to hope. Is it wrong to dream of home? Is it wrong to call ourselves Alamegans? Do not heed such poisonous notions, child. Our dreams are what sustain us. Be strong, I swear to you. Those villains will answer for their crimes in due time. But tell me, does anyone else know about this? Will Red, he saw me outside. He was so angry. I must tend to Bert Liana. In the meantime, I need you to find out what the young ones make of this. I fear they may do something rash. Okay, this is where I think I go up that low ramp thing. Okay. Oh. Now I have to find them. Oh. 
a map. Oop. the shiny. Okay. There's a youth over here. What those animals did to Ber Berliana is unforgivable. And to think they took a, they looked down on us. Well, I'll suffer this humiliation no more. I'm what's well read to the bitter end. I'm not afraid of a few lizards. Okay. Um, go up the ramp. So it took me a while when I first did this to realize there was a ramp and there's a youth up here and a youth over there. If this plan succeeds, we have the power to lay the empire low, to change the world for the better. Might be as Gundelbard's content to eke out an existence in this musty old cave, but I'll be damned if I'm going to spend the rest of my life here. Now where in the seven hells did I put that bloody map? Mm-hmm. The one I have. What you looking at, Will Red? Almighty oh, Ralgar, Lord of Destruction, we implore you, lend us your strength and put an end to the suffering of your people. Hmm. Here to interfere again? Well, you're too late. Our plan is already in motion. Once we have the crystals, our enemies will pay for their crimes. And no one will dare oppose us again. Oppress us again. He kind of like shook. He shooketh. Okay. He. A lot of them than it is as I feared. They mean to take matters into their own hands. But what exactly is it that they mean to do? Excuse me. What's this? A hunting knife and a map of, and a map of Zanark? Wait, you said Wilred spoke of crystals, did you not? But they couldn't possibly mean to. By the gods, this is rank madness. The young fools are untrained and unblood at all. They have no notion of how dangerous the Amaja are. They'll be butchered before they get within a hundred yalms of the crystals. They are headed east. If we hurry, we may yet find them before it's too late. Okay. So let's go this way. out this one. All right. Okay. Yep. Okay.
Let's see how well I do. Will Rig, did no other survive? This is all wrong. Getting the crystals was supposed to be the start. We were going to reclaim our homeland. We were, we... Pull yourself together, lad. We were going to make an offering of crystals to Ralagar to summon him, just like the Max Man told us. We plotted to sneak into Xanark and make up with the Lizard Man's catch, but they caught us and so many dead. Gods forgive me. Heathens, you shall pay for your crimes with your souls. These things again. I regret our young one's transgressions, but a soul is too high a price for youthful folly. For all their failings, they are the hope of the Alamegan people. This hope I will guard with my life. Okay. Duty commence! Um. Oh no! Ugh. I was supposed to protect Winifred, that's right. Okay. Shoot. Let's do very easy. Forgot about that. Watching me now be doing what I was supposed to do in the first place.
Your skill in arms as a prince of adventure are wayward youths could learn much from a man like you. The battle was won, but it would be unwise to linger here. Let us return to little Alamigo. Wait, you've come all this way. We have to get the crystals. They're right there, ripe for the picking. Have you learned nothing, Will Red? Did you not see those tempered wretches? Such is the fate of those who are touched by a god. Is that what you desire for yourself and your friends? What? No one said anything about it. The masked man told us we could defeat the Empire if we summon Ralagar. He swore enough. I will hear the rest of his sorry tale back at Little Alamigo. I dare say Azuna will wish to hear it as well. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry if uh, yeah. I switched it to easy just because I'm still learning how to play games with a controller and I just rather continue the storyline and not be frustrated, so. And I'm sure you don't want to be watching a stream where I die over and over and over again just because I'm struggling to get, you know, to learn my controller stuff. Remember, I was not always able to play um, console type games for years and years and years. And just because of various things and now that i'm starting to it's a learning curve now that i'm much older no more lies will red tell us everything i was outside with the others when he appeared the masked stranger he told us about summoning ralgar about using crystals and then just vanished we never saw him again i wanted so desperately to believe that we could raise ourselves from the squalor I never stopped to question his motives, but I should have known. There's no solution. Nothing we can do to change our lots. Our people are doomed to live and die like beasts. Listen to me, Will Red. Our home may be lost to us, but it takes more than stones and mortar to define who we are. No matter where we may be, Alamigo lives on within us all. It is for you to decide what to make of this legacy, but whatever you choose to do with your life, Never forget that you owe it to this adventurer, an outsider. I, I won't, I promise. Thank you for saving me, and sorry I tried to kill you. My thanks as well, friend. It gives us hope to know that there are kind souls such as you out there. Little Alamigo may not have much in the way of comfort, but you will always be welcome here. Yeah. All right. Let's get another high potion, why not? Sweet, level 36. Back to square one. Gundabald wants to wish you well on your investigation. Would that we have more information to offer but what Will, Will Red told you is the extent of our knowledge of the mass stranger. Left unchecked, that man will bring about great pain and suffering. I pray that you find and put a swift end to this creature for the sake of the young ones who died by his poisoned words. Okay. Report to Menphilia, all right. Inventory. Um, oh, it's 
Jesus. So I've been going for about two hours. I will talk to Manphilia and then end this stream. I'll talk to Manphilia, pick up the next uh, quest, and then end the stream. Chatter. Enter the walking sands. There's Thancred still. Welcome back, Azuna. I am reliably informed the investigation took you to Quarry Mill and Little Alamigo. So tell me, were you able to learn lot aught of La Habrea? Planted the knowledge of summoning and impression in impressionable young minds, you say? Precisely the kind of deception the Asians would employ. While many of the ills that ail the land can be attributed to the calamity, some are being brought about by a malignant will. We must delve deeper into this, while things remain quiet on the primal front. All work and no play makes menphilia a dull scion. Oh no. Hmm? Did you say something? Nothing, my lady. Tataru. Ahem. Perhaps we ought to rest a while before speaking further of the investigation. <laughs> That's kind of mean, right? Okay. Terra at Falgord. Menphilia has another lead for you to pursue. While you were tending to business in Thanalan, some new information arrived courtesy of our friends the Sylphs. An individual fitting La Habrea's description has been sighted in the North Shroud. This sighting comes in the wake of a series of mysterious deaths in the self-same area. My instinct tells me that our man is involved. I would have you continue your investigation where you left off. Twelve willing, we will pick up La Habrea's trail once more. Noraxia can furnish you with the details. Pray speak with her and take it from there. As always, be careful out there, Arizona. Oh, that's right, she's here. Okay. I forgot. A little soap is here. Okay. Out. And this way. There she is. Walking one is to investigate Sister One, then he'd want. Well, this one's words. This one is friend to a walking one in the Ashcrown Consortium. According to Friendly One, a digging one named Medrod had an encounter with a scary mass one. This mass one is most certainly a sinister one. Walking one should go and speak with digging one Medrod. Digging one is to be found at Falgard Float in Norshroud. Okay. So I'm not tuned, but by Gridania, okay. 
easiest to get to. Um, I bent branch my nose. All right, so. Uh, return. Yes. Okay. And now that I have this new quest, yeah, I'm going to end the stream here. So, if you... Because I play this on PS4, I can't... Um, I away from my computer so I can't see if anyone kind of peeked in the stream but if you did peek in the stream thank you thank you so much for watching if you're watching this as a bod either on twitch or on YouTube I very much appreciate you for your support and yeah uh, remember my current goal for on twitch is 50 followers and my current goal as of this stream on YouTube is 100 subscribers. So, as I say on my YouTube channel, that's going to be all for uh, I'm going to end this stream here. That's going to be all for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please stay safe, stay happy. And I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Rest my voice a bit, too.